Hi and welcome back. And we've been talking about counselling and emotional wellbeing. And we've been having a conversation with Lyndall Briggs and talking about hypnotherapy. And we're about to now welcome Mr. Martin Hunter Jones. Come on in, Martin. Hello. Hi. And I believe you know this wonderful woman. Yes, I do. Hi, Lyndall. Please have a seat. Thank you. And again, Martin, thank you so much for being part of the show. You're very welcome. And like, uh, like Lyndall, yours has also been a pretty amazing journey. What was it at school that they thought you might have been? We're going to jump right in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I was uh, diagnosed as being dyslexic. And school. why was that? Um, well, I mean, I suspect in retrospect it was just wasn't, wasn't very interesting and I wasn't interested in the details of the, you know, times tables. Too boring. Mm -hmm. mm. And when was it that they discovered that that wasn't the case? Well, I, I don't think it ever got followed up on and I just proceeded to do what I did. Um, I discovered it for sure when, um, when in fact I went to university and did quite well. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so before we go back to that part of your journey, you were also and still are the president and yes. the founder of the New South Wales Association. Yeah. No, Counselling Association. Counselling Association, yeah. Which this wonderful woman is vice president of. Thank heaven, she's been a godsend. Yeah, so tell us a little bit how that happened. Well, uh, I was uh, just starting working in um, counselling in the uh, private practice and I was looking around to try and involve myself with um, counselling and, and be a part of a community of counsellors. When you're on your own, it's a bit uncomfortable. And <laughs> I just didn't find anybody and in, in anywhere I could find, uh, find a great relationship with. Um, ACA was, was a really nice organisation, but mostly they were up in Queensland. ACA um, is what? Australian Counselling Association. Okay. Um, and with a bit of help from the Australian Counselling Association, notably Philip Armstrong, um, I, I got inspired to get started and um, start an organisation which would actually provide a, a network opportunity, a training opportunity and a supervision opportunity to counsellors who are working in private practice and uh, needed it close and, and affordable. Okay, so what year did you found? The association. Well, I'll kind of forget which exactly year. I think <laughs> year, year 2000. Yeah. Around 2000, okay. Yes. So just as we've heard about how Lyndall moved into counselling and hypnotherapy, yeah. what do you think drew you into counselling as a young person, for, for example? Well, I wanted to be a marine biologist when I was a kid, but um, uh, my life's had epiphanies through it. I mm. mean, um, one epiphany I had, it, it seems a little odd to be speaking about it at 40 years old, but um, when I was three, I remember um, knowing that I must not hurt anybody's feelings. You know, of course, <laughs> it's a disaster since then. You know, I've hurt lots of people's feelings, but that's that's the sense of things I had at that time, and it's still a very poignant memory. Um, my grandfather had a, a, a background in uh, mental health and and working with mental health. Indeed, so did my grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and again, uh, that, that epiphany happened. I, I can still recall a, a poem and a drawing that I did um, at about 24, basically deciding to proceed through um, learning to become a counsellor psychotherapist. I didn't even know what that meant at the time, really. Wow. Mm. So you went through school, yeah. and what did you do when you finished? Well, I became an assistant hydrographer for the Water Resources Commission. What? <laughs> <laughs> 13th floor on an orange building in North Sydney. And that, yeah, it's what we remember, isn't it? And there... Uh, there? I wasn't really made to be a scientist, it seems. I, I basically um, went and worked for the Spastic Centre, doing personal care for adults with disabilities. Um, loved that. Um, moved to Adelaide, did a degree in psychology, um, worked with older people in nursing homes um, to pay my way through university. Um, then came back to the Spastic Centre, um, worked in the houses, uh, helping people with disabilities again, and then went into working as an advocate within the Spastic Centre for the clients of the Spastic Centre. Okay, and mm. from there? Um, worked as a, 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 in a family support environment, so uh, helping families in crisis uh, keep it together and, and keep going as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I started my private practice after that. Okay, so yeah. it's been a, quite a comprehensive background, <sighs> working in a, a number of community-based yeah, areas. yeah. I, I mean, I started in the community-based area uh, kind of by accident, but mm -hmm. um, found a great rapport with it. it I guess it was a, um, it's been a 20-year, 25-year decision to, to proceed in this direction. Okay. Mm. Now, Lyndall earlier spoke about straight counselling. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm a straight counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many thoughts come to mind. Mm. Um, <laughs> so what is a straight counsellor in your understanding? 
<sighs> well, I mean, um, it's Lyndall's language. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know that there are any straight counsellors, as it were. Counselling, the, the basic tool of counselling is listening very, very well. Um, some people have attention for other people. Some mm -hmm. people don't seem to have attention for other people. Um, so listening very, very well tends, tends to have a way of people washing their mind out. Just by telling the stories of their life, they, they clarify things. Mm -hmm. So I'd call that the basic building block of straight counselling. Um, but really, I mean, every, everybody engages a variety of techniques in, in their counselling, every professional, um, and there's kind of a mind games, positive ways of getting the mind to look at things from different directions. Uh, that's where the counselling gets the big change. Okay. And you use the word discharge, discharging energy, yeah. discharging... Well, it kind of amounts to the same thing. My, my sense is that our, our society very much wants people to think their way through problems. We, we don't want to share your agony, you know, just get it together, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Um, what I've found is that thinking your way through problems doesn't always work. It's certainly useful, but ultimately they think their way through the problem, they see the solution, um, and then they don't do it. There's another thing that needs to be done, and from my mind it's the discharge of emotions. You tell the stories the way it was back then, mm -hmm. feel the feelings, uh, give those feelings a life and then a death, clears your mind and actually it's like taking, it's like, uh, uh, what's the word? Oh, I can't think of the word. Sounds like. Uh, sounds like <laughs> deleting programs in your computer, just, okay. just to clear it out, mm -hmm. defragging the computer. Yeah, mm. okay. And you're also a writer for the Manly Daily? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, knock up 350 word thing on uh, counselling every week. Okay. Yes. And you work with childhood development? Um, I pretty much work with everybody. Yes, I work yeah. with children, I work with adults, I work with parents. Um, the whole spectrum of, of counselling. Um, hmm. Okay. How do you personally find counselling is now viewed in our society? Are we starting to open up a little bit more to accepting? Uh, the emotional fragility we sometimes have? I really believe we are. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, the, the feminine gender has been a little faster under the game than the masculine, but mm -hmm. e even, even we men are, are getting on to speed. It, it really works to get uh, a problem shared as a problem halved. It really works to move things on. Um, having said that, I think the counselling industry is a little bit misunderstood. Um, I don't think people really understand the differences between psychiatry, psychology and counselling. Um, and, and the differences are a little hard yes. to understand sometimes. Would you like to help explain and, ah. and, and jump in mm -hmm. here yeah. a little bit uh, if need be? In a nutshell and by all means, <laughs> um, psychiatrists are medically based people. Um, they diagnose uh, a variety of mental illnesses and prescribe a medication accordingly. Um, they believe that, it, it seems they believe that the the disease can be chemically altered and, and that's, that's the solution. Um, a lot of psychiatrists are tremendous counsellors and a lot of psychiatrists use counsellors because they understand its benefits. Mm -hmm. Psychology is not medically trained, it's basically around assessing people and understanding what particular things are going wrong according to the psychological um, paragons, mm -hmm. which change over years, that's another story. Uh, it's a lot to do with statistical um, normative functions, what's normal, what's not normal. Um, uh, so assessing people. Again, a lot of psychologists are fabulous counsellors. They understand the use of counselling. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Counsellors are trained in counselling. They do counselling. Mostly in our community, the, 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 the basic idiom is, I want counselling, I need counselling. If you want counselling, get a counsellor. Okay. Would you add to any of those? No, I think um, really you did it really well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should write that up for the website. <laughs> I've got an essay on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, speaking of essays, you mentioned something about what you're doing next week. And what was the topic? Ah, oh, yes, I'm going to a convention and I'm, uh, for the Australian Counseling Association mm -hmm. and presenting a paper f which is called um, Explaining that counsellors are often accidental hypnotherapists. Mm -hmm. um, and elaborating? <laughs> uh, well, because a lot of people come and they haven't actually thought internally about their problems and as you sit there and you, you just talk to people and, and as Martin says, they have um, bolts of lightning, epiphanies that suddenly they go, ah, oh, and you can see the pennies drop and a lot of people come to counselling and they, they have a time distortion, they just sit down and they go, what, an hour's up mm -hmm. and this is a, a sign of trance that you've got a time distortion. Um, sensory distortion, so they focus just on the therapist and they're not aware of anything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I want counsellors to understand that hypnotherapy 
also as a tool that they use, perhaps not as formally um, as, as somebody trained in it, but to understand that it's not so weird because we have to cross over with councils. And that's why I love being with the NSWCA because they're very open-minded. I understand what you're saying there, Linda. I, I can see, um, having some introduction to hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. um, I can see how w what you just fall into as a straight counsellor um, <laughs> is uh, you can use hypnotic tones, you can use repetitions. You, mm. you actually do into trance when people mm. are, uh, they've had a lot of attention, they've had a bit of discharge. They're, it's like the cards are falling in their head. Mm. And that's a moment where yeah. you can access um, some really solid changes. Because yeah. I think uh, when you and I were talking, you were saying that for example, when a person is watching TV, mm. what were you saying about that? <laughs> Nasty trends. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay, I'm not a, into the details of it, but there's a certain brainwave that goes with meditation, um, that goes with... with Alpha. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> with with, with uh, sleep, with uh, trance. Yeah. Um, and it's very, uh, it's very receptive and it's very therapeutic. You need it. If you don't get it, you, you're going mm. to be in a mess. Um, hypnotherapy provides that. TV also provides it. Unfortunately, except for this good program, um, <laughs> there's not always a lot of good ideas getting received mm -hmm. in that very receptive moment. Don't let your watch yeah. children watch TV before they go to school. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take a break mm -hmm. and come back with us soon.